Well, the 2388 we had on the Cornhead went down. Let's take a look here. It's a little dark, but actually the lighting on camera is not bad. Um, if you're familiar with the back end of a combine, which I get a lot of requests for how does a combine work, so we'll kind of maybe cover that right now. There's two sieves here, like uh, deck plates that are almost like screens that shake back and forth and the corn falls through, or beans, whatever the crop is, falls through and slides to that auger, and then there's an elevator that takes it to the top. Um, our upper, our top sieve, which would ride out, that's my knee, which would ride on this track to the front, and actually it's down, because we have it out, but it would be up. The front corner, a bolt came out of it. It dropped, that bracket needs to be welded back to that corner, and our bottom one appeared okay. Uh, but in order to get at this bottom, uh, we needed the bottom one out to fix that, and then we had to open up the belly there to look in there. But there's two sieves here, like I say. Here's your uh, chopper. Um, and there, we're going to go look on the side of the combine, and we'll see where those augers come from to bring the threshed uh, material back and over, and it'll shake uh, over the top of these down onto those sieves and they'll work its way back. There's a fan. That corn is not supposed to be there, but there's the fan that's blowing air to help separate the trash out. And then these would be where the spreaders are, okay? So let's go look at the side of the machine here. So here's the side of the machine, about mid-machine. Um, here's those um, wires, whatever you wanna call them here, that would be, this is where the sieve would start. This is your rotor, your concave area. There's different terms, so I'm sure people are gonna tear me apart. I'm not a combine mechanic, but I'm just trying to show this because people ask. <clears throat> your material comes through here, the majority of it. And if you can see inside here, there's these bars and it'll rub. You can adjust the tightness, the width in, many, in between here. That spins at different speeds, depending on which crop you're doing, different tightnesses, depending on which crop you're doing. That thrash material that fits between here drops down into these augers. These augers transfer here, and it starts shaking out the back to separate even more the trash and the corn or beans in our case. And the, like I say, the material we want will drop and go out. Now, if it's bigger material, corn husks, uh, stalks, whatever it might be, bean uh, bean stalks, and it continues to travel up there, that's where it goes through those knives, that chopper, and out the back as well. Um, this up front here is another extension basically of these. When you get to the front there, there's a little bit of a cone, an impeller, some people call it, to the front to help it suck and speed up into the rotor there. And otherwise it's just a feeder house in front of that there. So we'll look at that quick. Rotor would be right behind, right behind here. And you have your feeder house that turns this way and brings the material up into the uh, impeller rotor concave area and pushes it back. So we have a new um, sieve on the way to slide in, but since we have the other machine, converted that to corn after we finish beans there and uh, he's out doing corn, I need to get the cart to him. So I, I need to get going, but I'm gonna just quickly show you the broken sieve here quick. It's the bottom one that's not broke. Here's the top one. This bolt had come out and it was sitting like that. And we're missing a, a, you know, one of the forky plate deals, whatever you want to call them, part of the sieve. And then a couple of them, like this here, needs to either be recrimped. See how that moves independent of this row, where this row, the next down here, moves. So, yeah, we, uh, or I made a phone call last night. We used to have one of our machines used to have plastic sieves. And uh, we used to be able to just uh, put new ones in there. That wire is gone in that section. And it looks like it'd be, I don't know, we we're looking at how you'd replace that. Maybe there's somebody close by that will work on this one for us, but we needed one to get going. Um, we called the dealership, they said, nope, can't replace those, need a whole new sieve. Great. So we uh, called the combine uh, salvage yard a few hours away. They have a pile of them, as you can imagine. And they're gonna ship one to us. They weigh 140 pounds, the metal one. And you think about having 
you know, anywhere, I don't know, five to 10 bushel shaking across the top of that. You know, you're talking quite a bit of weight. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're beefy and they need to be. But uh, as of now, if this other combine, I'm not even gonna say it, keeps on ru running, should keep on humming. That'll be a rain day project to repair that one. It looks like Monday possibly rain. So we're gonna keep uh, trucking along how we are. Uh, I'm unaware if I told you guys we got the Pheasants Forever edition of the 2388. If you can see it right there, that's how you can tell it's the Pheasants Forever edition. It's taken the guys a little bit of getting used to that uh, this one doesn't have the big top uh, extension on the top with the front facing uh, to catch a little extra. So we're get, having to get used to that again. I'm not responsible for that yet. I'm sure I would have spilt some, but uh, it'll just take some getting used to. We used to have a machine that didn't have that uh, hopper. So we'll get used to it after we get it repaired. I don't know, we'll see if we get it back on there. I'll tell you what, um, there was like four acres of beans we had left because they were so muddy. Uh, and I did them last night with a four wheel drive one. No way would I have even dreamed of getting around the field with a two wheel drive machine. So I don't know if we'll switch back combines if this other one keeps working. So uh, regardless, we need to fix the other one to get it operational. Uh, and then we'll do that when we get the parts. So probably just gonna end this video here to show you guys what we're doing and the repairs that we have to make. And then, uh, I get a lot of requests for the insides of the combine. I thought what better time to show you um, but yeah, with that, we're going to keep picking corn. That'll be a different video. So you guys have a good one. Be safe as always. Check you later.